Hello, this is Kyle Allender of Christian Idealism, and today I wanted to go over why I think, at least, why Hume's problem of induction is overrated. So, first of all, I think it's helpful to understand what is the, what is Hume's problem of, problem of induction. Well, basically, what he's trying to get at is this idea that it is fallacious or it is unjustified to make inferences about the future only based on our past observations. So for example, if I, let's say that I live my life and I've always observed the sun to rise every day, right? And so then therefore I can conclude, well, the sun is gonna, is gonna rise every day from the future moving forward. And I can basically take our, my, past, our, my past observations and then just make all the predictions about the futures I want. So it's, in, it's interesting to note that inductive inference has to do with taking what we do know and then trying to infer what we don't know, okay? So because we don't know about the future, right, given our contextual limitations or epistemic limitations, um, then yeah, we can't really know in some sense about the future. And so in order to make predictions about the future, we have to make these inductive generalizations, right? Now, here's the important thing about induction which is that induction is just basically just this notion that, well, we can, we can predict all future states. So here's an example. Let's say that, uh, let's say I have a jar. I don't have a jar with me, but let's just pretend I do. And, but let's say I can't see through the jar, right? And let's say I pull out, let's say a green ball. Okay. And I go in there and I keep calling out, pulling out green balls. And let's say by, let's say there's a hundred balls in this jar. And in every single bar, every single ball that I've pulled out, there has been, it's all been green ball, balls. Well, inductively, what I would conclude, given those observations, is that, well, all the balls in the jar are green, right? That's the inductive generalization, right? So I take the observations that I observe, and then I try to create a universal generalizations about those observations. And what Hume wants to say is like, okay, well, if we try to do that within not not just in the bar, not just in the ball example, but for anything, we're basically unjustified in doing that. Basically, we cannot say we cannot take the observations that we do find ourselves in and then try to infer infinitely into the future, right? And in some sense, I think Hume is getting at something very important, and that is our limitations. I mean, making these necessary connections between um, the, en the, the observations that we make and then the entities that we have to posit. And so here's the reason why I think Hume's problem of induction is kind of overrated, which is, well, we don't have to only rely on induction. We can rely instead on abduction. What is this? Well, what's the difference between induction and abduction? Well, abduction has to do with theory building. It has to do with, okay... I need to actually formulate and build a theory about um, my observation. So how would this work in the ball example? Well, in the ball example, let's say, take the same scenario, right? I have this jar with green balls, right? But instead of only relying upon the balls that I pulled out, let's say that I learned some other fact. For example, let's say that I learned that other people have also, that other people have gotten, uh, jars with green balls in them, right? And let's say that all these people have also gotten these green balls from a factory. Let's say it's a, it's a factory, green ball factory, right? And let's also learn that, oh, the owner of this factory, actually his favorite color is green or something like that, right? So basically in this, in this scenario, I'm actually acting as a detective. I'm not merely just relying on, you know, what I have observed and then trying to make inductive inferences there. But rather, I'm actually going out and trying to find other facts that relate to what I have observed, right? And so then there, I start to formulate a theory about my observations. So it's not merely I'm just relying on my observations and then trying to make inductive generalizations or universal generalizations. Rather, I'm actually building a theory about the observations. So I'm positing something that... Um, that can explain the data, right? And then, what does that mean? Well, we take the same inference. We say, okay, well, 
let's say I have a theory about my green ball example. And so I'm going to infer from that theory, given all the facts that support that theory, that, oh, all future um, balls that I pull out of the jar are going to be green, right? And again, the reason why I, I can infer that is not because, me, not merely because of the observations themselves, but rather because my, it's my higher order theory about the green balls that where I can make that generalization, right? And so this is why I think Hume's problem of deduction is not really, it's, it's really overrated in my opinion. And the reason why is because, well, we could just formulate a higher order theory about our observations. And then if that, order, if that higher order theory tells us that all future states must be a certain way, then we can make that inference, right? Um, there's no need to rely only upon the observations that we have seen to make the inference. But no, we actually have a theory about our observations that actually do make that prediction. And so in that case, then there, there really is no problem of induction because we actually have, we actually have a higher order theory that can kind of mediate um, between the observations that we do find ourselves in and then the unobserved um, things that we don't find ourselves in or any future states, right? And so that's why, I, in, that's why in general, I don't think that Hume's, I think that Hume's problem induction, while it is an interesting objection or interesting thought experiment, I think ultimately at the end of the day, it is very overrated because there's a way you can get around it, right? So the basic way to get around is just, well, you just need a higher order theory about your observations um, so that we can, we can actually make inferences about the future. And so in conclusion, because abduction precedes induction, because my higher order theory informs me about my inductive inferences, Hume's problem of induction is not really an issue. Um, on this. And so yeah, that's basically why, at least for me, Hume's problem of induction isn't isn't really like an issue. I think it's very overrated. And I think uh, you know, for those that study philosophy, I think we should we should take this what I've said in this video into account. Just because there's a way there's a, there's an obvious way around it, which is well, we just let's just stop talking about induction and just focus on abduction, right? Let's just start to build theories, right? Um, so yeah, anyways, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.